If our children are really a priority for our elected officials, then children must be a priority in the state budget that legislators will pass this session. That's where the rubber meets the road, folks. The state budget proposed yesterday was a good faith effort by new Governor Hutchinson to, uh, to meet many important state priorities. However, it fails to make all the critical investments that we need to ensure that all children are healthy and well-educated and are pre pre prepared to succeed in the workforce of tomorrow. For example, it does not provide the $16 million cost of living increase that our pre-K program needs to catch up after eight years of not receiving a dime of new funding. I mean, let me clarify something. You may have heard that Arkansas has received a new federal grant for pre-K. That's true. But please tell your elected officials that that new federal grant, um, uh, uh, nearly all of that has to go to creating new slots to serve more kids. It does almost nothing to provide a COLA increase, cost of living increase, for most of the state's existing 24,000 slots that have not received a dime of new funding. So programs and slots that we already have that are struggling, the new federal money is, is, um, is not going to help uh, the, um, uh, most of those programs. The budget released yesterday provides no new money for quality after school and summer programs so we can help ensure all kids are safe and have the, ex the extra educational opportunities during non-school hours to help them succeed in school. The proposed budget shortchanges the uh, NSLA school poverty funding program that is supposed to help close the educational achievement gap for low-income students. The new budget does not include a state earned income tax credit that would provide tax relief for the poorest 40% of taxpayers who are still struggling to make ends meet and who have not been part of the nation's economic recovery. It does not provide upfront funding that Arkansas needs to help reform the juvenile justice system and serve more low and moderate risk kids in more effective community-based programs rather than locking them up in secure confinement that we know does nothing to help promote uh, the, uh, the odds of them succeeding in the long term. Um, it does not fully fund the Division of Children and Family Services and the state's uh, child welfare system for abused and neglected kids. And unless it does, we know that caseloads are going to increase, services are going to suffer, and the well-being of kids will be put at risk. These are but a few uh, of, the, uh, of, of the examples of unmet needs in the, uh, in the budget released yesterday. There are others. The governor's proposed tax plan is going to pass out in the coming days. You know, that's a given of folks at this stage. But the purpose of today's press conference is about what happens after that this session. Um, there is still a lot of work to do on the budget this session, folks. Uh, we urge the legislature to defeat other tax cut bills that we know are going to be proposed in the coming days. Um, uh, that, that will take more money out of the budget unless those tax cut bills are targeted to low income taxpayers. Uh, we also urge the legislature to find new ways to raise more money to put into the budget and meet those critical unmet needs that we've already identified in the last 24 hours. Um, so there's still a lot of work to do. We're going to need everybody in this room to go out and advocate for kids. But remember, this session, the, one of the big issues is the budget, and it's about the investments that we need to make in the state's children and families so that we can all have a, a, a future that works for all of the state citizens. So thank you very much.